Hi everyone, um, I'm afraid I'm going to stand between you and your networking drinks just for a little while longer, but bear with me, hopefully it'll be worth it. So as Morgan said, I'm eToro's, one of eToro's most copied popular investors, and eToro is the world's leading social investing platform. Um, if you're not familiar with social investing, it's a wonderful combination of the financial markets and the wonderful world of social communities that we have become accustomed to over the last few years. Popular investors are not um, employees of the company, but we are users of the platform. Uh, and by making our track record public, we essentially gather a following by people who say, I like your strategy and I want to invest in it. Um, so by doing this over the last few years, I have gathered over 175,000 followers and over the last few years, over 20,000 of them have used their money to copy my strategy and this has totaled to over $50 million over the last couple of years. And I should just add to that that I've never worked uh, a day in the traditional sort of investment banking sector. So. I've also been in most of the large media outlets in the UK, from uh, Bloomberg, This Is Money, Business Insider, and of course, Wire did a wonderful piece um, on social trading earlier this year. Earlier this year, I also quit my job as a research fellow, ooh, as a research fellow in machine learning and AI at the University of Oxford. So why would I do that to do this? Well, after I finished my MBA, I wanted to do a PhD. Um, but I didn't want to take a career break because I was stressed about not contributing to a pension. Uh, and so I struck a deal with myself saying that during that time of doing a PhD, I would make sure that I'm investing in myself, that I'm taking responsibility for my financial future. Uh, and I promised myself that I would do that by investing. So I set out on a journey to look for a suitable platform that I could use to um, do this investing, uh, and that's when I came across eToro. What struck me most about the platform was not just the transparency that it allowed for people to see each other's uh, you know, investments and positions, but it was also that there was a community of people who really wanted to disrupt and look for alternative ways to uh, build their wealth, just like me. And so um, I built my strategy and my track record up until the end of last year. If you follow the stock market, you know that this year has been very difficult um, for most investors. But up until last year, I was delivering 25% a year um, for myself, but also all of the people who were copying me. And this puts the portfolio right among some of the you know, big names out there, and also at the same time doing it in a way that has moderate ri um, risk to the copiers. What I really love about this was that I wasn't just able to build my own investment, but that I was able to give access for people to get access to this sort of um, portfolio without needing large capital investments. With as little as $1,000, somebody could copy my portfolio and the platform would automatically mimic those um, positions. So what was unique about my strategy? Well, it has sort of two layers, as I call it. The first layer is just the basics. There's really nothing there. It's uh, what any good investor would do. It's focusing on compounded growth. It's um, you know, doing your due diligence, using fundamentals to make sure that you understand the, what's happening in the economic environment. And then it's also managing your risk to ensure that your portfolio is not too volatile. Nothing new about that. But what was unique about my portfolio is the second layer, which is what I call the me. It was the part that I could bring to my portfolio that was uniquely Heloise. So as I mentioned, I have a PhD in machine learning, and so naturally my technical analysis was done by AI and machine learning algorithms, which I wrote back in 2015. That was my way of understanding the world. That was my way of analyzing data and looking at a lot of complex data at the same time to make sense of the world. Then the second part of that was I used the time that I was living in. And that meant at the time these platforms were coming uh, available. 
and they offered low or zero fees. And that was unique to sort of, you know, that time. It was back in 2016, but as Morgan mentioned, it has been around since 2007. And then finally, the additional data point, which we didn't have before, was tapping into the social feed. It was giving us an insight, giving me an insight into the hive mind of the other users on the platform. What is the retail investor saying? What are they discussing? What are they thinking? Not just what are they thinking, but what are they doing? Because I can see what somebody is discussing, posting, debating. I can see what's going on in their mind. And then I can go and look at their portfolio and I can see whether they're actually doing what they're saying because sometimes there's a disconnect between what people say and what they do. But the, the transparency here allowed us to get into people's minds and also to see what actions they're taking based on that. So it was really the second layer which, which gives any popular investor or somebody the advantage of using their unique self to build their strategy. So we've heard a lot today about why technology platforms are enablers of disruption. Um, in the Monzo talk this, this morning, we were talking about it. And, and yeah, it is just um, that technology becomes this enabler rather than the thing that is actually the, ch the change. So in this case, in social trading, the platform becomes the thing that has disrupted or enabled the disruption. And in my view, there's three really important things about why a social investing platform like eToro is enabling that. Firstly, is being able to offer low or no fees to the retail investor. That's really important. Secondly, is having a low entry. And thirdly, is this aspect about connectivity and a community. So when I, before I started my PhD, I sat down and did this back of an envelope calculation. I was in my early 20s, so I had roughly 45 year period before my retirement. <laughs> and I thought, well, if I have 10,000 pounds and I invested for 45 years, let's say, let's say 6%, really conservative, lower than what the stock market has averaged over the last few years. Um, if I do that on a platform like eToro, which has 0.09% spread fees, my 10,000 pounds could turn into roughly 140,000 pounds. If I chose, if I made one different decision by choosing a different platform, choosing one which charges commissions between, industry standard is between 0.2 and 0.4%, just commission to execute the trade, that would eat about 20% into my final lovely retirement pot. If I then said, well, this is too much effort for me, I need an actively managed fund or I need some help making these decisions, Again, let's be generous here. Industry standard is one to 2%. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. We'll go for 1%. Um, and if we combine that with the, some of the commission fees, if we're taking a very conservative 1.3%, 1.35%, which is what was my alternative at the time, I would end up with just over 70,000. So I would end up with almost half than I would if I had done it myself. And we often forget, oh, it's just 1.35%. It doesn't sound a lot. But once I plotted this out, I really started thinking about, maybe arrogantly, maybe naively, I thought, well, what's the worst thing that can happen if I give this a go? And it's not just the fees that we're losing. So as I said, in this scenario for my life, there was going to be 20,000 pounds of fees that I pay over this 45 period. Um, but we forget the compounding that happens if we reinvest those fees. So if we were to reinvest those fees every year, we'd actually, we're actually losing another 30,000 of the end pot. And that's a really power, powerful thing about continuous, consistent, compounded growth. I mean, Einstein said it so wonderfully when he said, compounded growth is the eighth wonder of the world. Those who understand it, earn it. Those who don't, pay it. And this is such a wonderful example. If you just understood what the compounded growth could do for your investment over a long period of time, it's almost um, a no-brainer that you would do it yourself. So the second thing is the low entry or the low, the low uh, initial trading fee that people have on the platform. So when I joined eToro, the minimum trading position was $50. That meant with like a few hundred dollars, I could get a good diversity and a good spread of different stocks in my portfolio. 
But the other important thing here in these two examples is that eToro was one of the first platforms in the UK that allowed fractional stocks. So if we look at the first case, this person has $1,000. They want to buy a few things which are popular, which the brands they know. Um, but immediately, the Tesla stock catches your eye because at $250, that's 25% of their portfolio. Now, this is not an investment advice, but the general sort of rule of thumb is that if you don't want a highly, if you don't want a highly overexposed portfolio, you shouldn't have more than 5% invested in a single stock. Not investment advice, just a general rule of thumb in the literature. But immediately, this person is overexposed by buying, because they have to buy whole stocks. There were, in option one, there's not the scenario of fractional stocks. The other problem with this scenario is that they're left with cash. So either they're forced to buy something that they don't want, maybe they buy another Rolls Royce stock, uh, or they're forced into penny stocks, which is uh, highly risky and volatile. Nobody really wants to go there. Um, and cash is a really powerful thing in a portfolio, don't get me wrong, but cash that is not a decision is a dead zone because immediately this person is almost not able to use 10% of their portfolio to invest in the stock market. In scenario two, not only is the entry low, $10 per trade, but also they're able to buy fractional stocks. So for the first time, the retail investor could sit down and strategically design a portfolio according to the per percentages that they want in their, port in their portfolio. And this is a really powerful enabler for the retail investor to be able to manage their own money. And then finally is this idea of community and connectivity. So, the wonderful thing that drew me to the, to the platform was the transparency. Every single trade that I have ever made, every single position that I currently have is public. Anybody can go on my portfolio and see that. That means there's no hiding behind numbers. There's no like working with the numbers to present them in a particular way to my colleagues, to my potential copiers. What you see is the raw truth of what has happened. It's the, exactly the way it's happened. There's no hiding behind the fact that the portfolio is down double digits this year, along with the stock market. And it's about embracing that. It's about learning from you know, what's going on and helping people, which brings me to the second point, is the social feed of having this idea of socialness where people can come to teach. They can come to learn, they can come to debate, they can come to ask questions, no matter how trivial it is, because it's other retail investors who are explaining sometimes very complex um, concepts in their own language, the way they have understood it. That doesn't make them experts, but if there's enough collected to sort of moderate that, the truth is always somewhere in the middle. So, you know, people will find their truth. And then finally is this copy trading um, you know, facility that eToro have that is really unique. So some people might say, this all sounds great. I like, I see your point about not paying the 1.35% fees, but it's not for me. I don't have the time. I don't have the interest. I just can't be bothered to take the risk to make that decision. But why should those people be, um, you know, kind of, Dis discounted from participating in the capital markets. So they can just simply choose to copy someone and through that get, that, um, get into the, the markets and also at a really low threshold, like a thousand or a hundred dollars can get them this managed fund. So what does the road ahead look like for social investing? So when, when you came to the stock, you probably thought it's gonna be exclusively about the meme stocks. Um, one thing the meme stock rally has done for the retail investor was to uh, let everybody take note. The media, institutions, everybody suddenly took note of the collective power of the retail investor. If a lot of people pull together small amounts of money, they can actually shift the price. Now there's a danger in this because the price of the stocks become disconnected from the actual value of it and it becomes risky. So. As somebody with a moderate risk portfolio, I have not participated in the mean stock rally in my public portfolio, um, but I've excitedly watched what has happened because I think it shows something 
much more fundamental that has changed for the retail investor. Because today, the retail investor has access to more information than a hedge fund manager did 10 years ago. And what happened in the meme stock rally is it showed us the graduation of the retail investor, the sophisticatedness that was happening if people had the opportunity to participate in the game, if people had the opportunity to make their decisions. Some retail investors have now graduated to more sophisticated financial products like options. Um, some people may just stay with stocks. Some people are dabbling in crypto. Um, but the meme stock rally has really showed that the retail investor is here to stay. And it's, for me, a very exciting prospect um, for disrupting what's available for them. Thank you.